Okay, folks, uh, welcome to another virtual toy chat. Tonight, uh, we're going to have another special presentation by our friend Doug Harkey, who always does a great job of sharing his knowledge and expertise in the world of uh, toy collecting. And uh, tonight, the topic is going to be on international scout trucks. And uh, those of us who have been around a while know that uh, IH was very popular in the pickup trucks and the scouts and the travelers back in the late 60s and 70s. And uh, so Doug has kindly agreed to share again uh, his knowledge with us and uh, has prepared a great presentation. So uh, Doug, thank you so much for joining us again and we'll uh, turn it over to you. Thank you. Let me get my screen shared here. Uh, the International Scouts were sometimes regarded as the first SUV an international brought them out in 1961, and they were a competition. Their big competitions, big competition was the Jeep. Uh, sort of the Jeep had been up, upgraded after World War II, and international thought that they could do better. There was a quite a good market. Also, they were looking at compacts. Remember, at that time, they had just introduced the Ford Falcon and the Chevrolet Corvette, two compact cars. So International thought there was going to be a good market for a compact truck. So they really originally intended the uh, Scout as a compact truck. And for those of you who know the history, the, the Scout, I think, was around 11 feet long. It was a fairly small vehicle and was initially powered by 152 cubic inch four-cylinder engine, which was exactly was the left bank of their 304. V8 engine. And there was only one option, or the okay, the major option was the four-wheel drive. There was only one engine and there was only one transmission. It was a three-speed manual transmission. So the basic scout was $1,600 US. And for an extra $350, you could get a four-wheel drive option with a two-speed transfer case. And if you added another $125, you got the full length roof, which covered the whole bed, not just the cab part. So that's a rough introduction to the Scouts. And people like Doug, Doug Vincent may know more about the, the technical details than I do. So the toy companies had been attuned to the introduction of the Scout. And this is from the 1961 International Toy Catalog. ESCA produced this pedal scout and the platform for this scout was actually the pedal Corvette, which ESCA had produced in the late 50s. It didn't sell very well because it was pricey and it was somewhat fragile. So they used that same platform and they put over a body that resembled a scout this body was made of plastic, so it was rather fragile. And uh, the retail price on this at the time was around $40 US. So it came out in 1961. And this is what a real pedal scout looks like. Like I've never seen a really good condition one. This one at least has the original hubcaps on it. And it's got some damage on the bumper. And you can see it's got some damage on the uh, panels here. And it's steered by a uh, pedal tractor steering wheel. And it was pedaled with typical pedal cars. You've got pedals that are linked back and forth through a, through a mechanism. Here are some more views. This is the rear view of the pedal scout. And this is a front view. I've only seen two scouts in real life. Wayne Samuelson, another Hall of Fame member, had one for sale at his shop in Dyersville more than a decade ago. And uh, a couple of people came in, they were gonna negotiate on it. And he said, unless you've got $10,000, we're not even gonna start negotiating. And when I left the shop, uh, somebody had offered him $10,000 cash plus some pedal tractors. And so I don't know what the final deal was on that. The other complete scout I saw was at Stu Paquette's International Museum in Leesburg, Florida. 
and uh, Stu died back in February, and it, the family was going to keep his museum open. It's probably the most complete international tractor, and they've also got trucks and implements there too. And uh, they decided to sell that collection. So Almond is having their auction, and in that auction is probably one of the best condition of the pedal scouts that I've ever seen. So if you can find one in Canada, you may be doing better than us. At the same time in 1961, Ertl introduced a uh, die cast scout. And this is a small one. It's six inches long. It never had glass in the windshield or glazing. It never had a top. The windshield frame folds down like the first real scouts. And the most common one, there are two common colors. There's blue and there are, there's gray like this one. And that's the box that they came in. From my calculations, they're approximately 126 scale. Uh, there have been a few that have come up for sale in Dyersville primarily. And they there was a red one and a yellow one and they brought a, a nice condition of one of those brought some ridiculous price. These typically sell for uh, two, two, 200 to $250 new in a the box. They're fairly common because Ertl made them for almost 10 years. And those wheels on them are rubber wheels mounted on a die cast rim and they don't steer. Uh, later on, they were sold for $90 wholesale and uh, dealers bought them towards the end of production as giveaways. Well, in 1962, TrueScale brought out a Scout. And this one was 1 16th scale. He was pressed steel like their international trucks, which I covered in uh, one of my previous presentations. And their first stab at it was a fairly deluxe set. This is the ad for it. This is the one that was sold by international harvester dealers, it was yellow. And it came with a blade, a snow blade on the front. It came with the regular truck top or the travel top, the long top, and it came with the doors. And that was the one that was sold by the dealers. And this is one in real life. It's, it's a yellow, uh, probably closer to a construction yellow. And it didn't have any, any decals on the doors. I'll, I'll show you a more complete decal on the on the tailgate. And uh, then it said Scout uh, on, on that side panel. And this is the box they came in. Uh, there it shows the two doors because people like to freewheel. So they didn't have any doors on. There are the two tops and there's the blade and there's the top for the box. And you're probably looking at Nowadays, between a uh, thousand and two thousand dollars for a nice scout like this new in the box. That's nowadays people are paying ridiculous money for condition, and this was, and you can see this box is pretty good. Ertl or True Scale also produced one for the general toy market, and the red one was for the general toy market, and you can see it has True Scale on the uh, doors. And it's got the big IH decal on the tailgate. Give you another view of it. This is, it was in a similar box. Uh, gives you some more. And they don't, the, the red one is, is fairly pricey. And this is a really nice condition one also, a nice condition box. And uh, it doesn't quite, it's just a little bit price lower than the yellow one. This is the general toy market one, the yellow one's the international dealer one. But look at how nice and clean the box is on this one. This is a rear view that shows the complete uh, decal on this uh, dealer one here. And notice that neither, well, the tailgate hinges downwards, but neither of these have trailer hitches. And I'll note later that they, in a these, these are the early models, the 61 and 62 models. Uh, 
and they don't have have trailer hitches. This is a front view of it, showing the, the two tops. I think since I took this picture, I've, I've acquired a couple that are a little bit better condition than this. Notice the wheels on them are die cast rims. Those are plastic tires on die cast rims and look at the white walls on them. Uh, the price on those two sets that I just showed you. Okay, either of the two sets, the yellow one or the red one, the complete set, were intended to retail for 375 US. And after the second year production, they raised the price to uh, $4 US. Uh, which was a sort of a medium price toy. Well, True Scale lost the licensing for the international trucks back around 1964 when uh, Ertl brought out the 806 uh, tractor. In fact, the 64 catalog was the last licensed uh, True Scale toy that was licensed to International Harvester. So some time in late 64 or late six, or in early 65 they brought out what's the, called the explorer line and there were a number of different colors that were added these were sold only on the general toy market then because by then since the toys weren't licensed international dealers didn't carry them and these i call these stripper scouts and notice that uh, they still have the die cast rims and the Here's, here's a good view of the plastic seat and the gear shift. Even the three-speed gear shift was on the floor. By this time, by about 63 or 64, they had an optional four-speed. And if you had a transfer case, you had a second lever there to shift the transfer case. So this these Explorer Scouts came with no doors, no blade in front, and no top. They were just a basic Scout and they retailed for $2 US. I must mention that the True Scale Scouts did not steer. So they made a tan one like this. They also made a khaki one, a darker brown one. And notice this is the only Scout version that I've seen that doesn't have white wool. I don't know whether they thought that they were gonna get this licensed by the army or what. That's why they didn't stick white walls on it, but it seems to be the only one without white walls. And so those are two colors. They also they produced the, the stripper one in red and yellow also, but dropped the yellow one soon. This is one of the really rare co colors, this lime one. Sorry for such a bad condition one. And most of the pictures, almost all the pictures are showing you are of scouts in our in my son's collection. And this is the best of the Lime Scouts I could find. A nicer one came up on eBay several years ago and it sold for $1,400. But that gives you an idea of the uh, Green Scout. Well, sometime around uh, uh, 1965, uh, they quit making those, they quit, or I, I think maybe, for another year or two, they made the Red Scout in the set. They, After 65, they dropped the yellow one in the set because they weren't licensed by International anymore. So in about 65, they changed this. Notice they took the glazing out of the windshield. So there's no more plastic insert in the windshield. And the, these wheels now are solid plastic with a hubcap or wheel cover in. And so this is characteristic of the later uh, of the uh, of the Scout wheels, those same type of wheel covers were, as I showed you in the True Scale truck production. They were on the very late True Scale trucks also. And this is a blue one. This is not a male Scout. This is just one of their color Scouts. But again, this newer version, these stripper Scouts, as I call them, as I refer to them, uh, True Scale called them the Explorers because they sold for two dollars. They were packaged in an open box like this, in a bubble box, I guess. And apparently the 
this was there was shrink wrapping over this box. Unfortunately, this one's not in very good condition. This box, the toy is very nice. Of these stripper scouts, this is the most difficult color to find. Is purple one? Uh, I looked for years, and I went through a couple. Well, I got this one after I wrote those initial articles for the toy trucker, and uh, I had two. I went through two series. This is the better one that's currently in our conduct in our collection. And notice that the interior in this one, the seat is gray instead of black like most ones. Now, by the late 60s, uh, as I'll, you'll hear in a few minutes, Ertl had brought out their scout. So True Scale was still trying to compete. And they made a couple special scouts. And one was the U US male scout. And there are two ver versions of this. See the US male on the decal there and a little uh, zip code uh, figure there, and then they were still into the civil defense. Well, this is actually the correct scout here, the one on the left. See, it's got left-hand steering, which you know that they have in mail trucks. And they also made some that were incorrect with right-hand steering. And these seem to, these right-hand steering ones seem to be a little more scarce than the correct left-hand ones. And they came with that full top with the decals on the top. By this time, these scouts had a hitch on the back. This is a, one of the male scouts. That's the kind of box they had, the special open front box. Remember, this is the late 60s when this came out. This is the back of the box. Probably the most difficult of these late true scale scouts to find is the tow truck scout. And the body was painted a light green, not the lime green, it's a different lime green than I showed you on that real rough, rough one earlier. It's got the short uh, truck top, and often that's missing. You can buy a replacement top, and the exact match for the color is Oliver Meadow Green, which was the color of the later auto, Oliver's. You see the blade came back on this, and that tow truck rack on the back was made by TrueScale, fabricates nothing, not like any of the other brands. And that's by far the priciest and the rarest of the TrueScale Scouts. And here's the same Scout with the gray seat in it. If you're going to work on the TrueScale Scouts, there's pretty good selection of parts. Uh, for a while, Dave Sharp was actually selling a replacement tow truck rack or a metal, a steel one. You can get replacement interiors or seats. You can get re these early replacement windshields with the glit with the plastic in there. And you can get these two metal tops, both the short one and the long one. One of the rarest of the true scale sets, Ertl bought out true scale in 1970, which I covered in my truck seminar. And Ertl had a lot of leftover scouts to get rid of. And one of the ways they did it, see, by this time, they were producing their own die-cast scout, 116 scout. And uh, uh, this is a really rare set. I don't know how many they got rid of this way, but not. this is the only one of these e that I've ever seen. It's the true scale, that blue scout, that explorer scout, the stripper one, They've added a uh, truck top on it. They've hooked behind their uh, their tilt bed trailer. That's a true scale tilt bed trailer. And there's the famous Ertl 544 as a load on that. And this was part of John Kinney's collection that Almond sold a number of years ago. I've seen a magazine ad for that. And then I've got this picture of the real set, but if you can find another set like that, you're looking at megabucks. So just to, to recap, the licensing went, went away for these uh, in about 1965, maybe the 60, 64 might've been the last year they were the international had licensed them. And so Ertl was just generally selling them to the, the uh, general toy market and the only 
designation of, of there was an IH was on the grill in the front, in the grill detail. Well, as you know, Ertl was expanding its toy lines. And in 1966, they came out with a Lodestar line. Actually, in 65, they had the two Lodestar trucks that were sold only by international dealers. The complete line was in the 1966 Ertl General Toy Cattle. Well, in 67, they introduced a scout, and this was a die cast scout in contrast to the true scale one, which was pressed steel. This scout steered, this, this steering wheel steered the scout. The doors did not open on this. The tailgate did not go down, and this had a plastic roof. And notice these wheel rims are, in this ad are the same type of wheel rims that they had on the late load stars and the fleet stars. And that's not a common rim for some reason on the scouts, but some of them have that on. This is the first, this is the, they sh I showed you that catalog picture of the first uh, Ertl Scout, the blue one. This has got the, the sport top, it's sort of a coupe top. This is an original top actually, you could buy, later you could buy a replacement. This has got a little nick out of the plastic on it, but it's still got the original window in the back. And this one has the usual smooth uh, hubcaps on it. And this is the interior. It was one big casting uh, for the main body parts stuck a steering wheel or a spare tire on the back. It was fastened with a screw and the windshield was a straight zinc casting here. And it's, it's, it, it's got the dash cast in the bottom of it. And it's fastened with a 440 screw, self-tapping screw. And that whole windshield frame holds in a plastic, clear plastic windshield, which is often broken. For a while, they sold replacement windshields and replacement frames, but I haven't seen those on the market for some time. So that's the earliest toy, Ertl Scout. In 1968 was the first time the Scouts appeared in the international toy catalog, the one with the international dealers got. And you can see the small Scout that I showed you earlier, the 1961, is still there and they're advertising. Well, if you go back a bit, this scout was called, that blue scout was called ceramic blue, that first one with the sport top, the coupe top. Another, another ceramic blue, another ceramic blue. Well, in this ad for international dealers, they, they've now gone to the travel top, the traveler top, and they're saying that the color of this one is aspen green. Well, in the 1968 Ertl catalog, the, the general toy catalog, they now expanded the colors. And uh, there's that green one, which supposedly was only sold by international dealers the first year. Uh, they've added a gold one and this purple one they call mulberry. Well, uh, it's sort of a, it's not a real purple color. So I'll continue to, those of you who have mulberry trees and have wild mulberry trees and have mulberries grow, they're a very common weed tree in Indiana. So that's, that's the mulberry one. The green one here that was sold by international dealers, there's the real one there, the fir first one. It's got the smooth uh, hubcaps and the plastic uh, travel roof. This is the box that these Ertl Scouts came in, the typical open front box. And these boxes are really rare because people really, I guess they didn't think they were very attractive and they threw them away. The other problem is these boxes were stapled shut out up here and probably most of the boxes were damaged when they tried to remove that staple. This is an end view of the box here, advertising the fact that they've got the spare tire stuck on the back and advertising that these scouts really steer. This is the uh, gold scout, the real, that's a picture of the real gold scout. And this is the 
mulberry scout, or as we refer to it as the Ertl red scout. This, this is a picture of all four of the colors of scouts. Uh, nowadays, well, remember that these were made in 19, 19 uh, through 1970 or 71, so they were made for about three or four years. So now we can take better stock of what's common and what isn't. And uh, on my observation, the most common one is the green one. That's by far the most common one. Probably the second most common one is the blue one. The third most common, it's pretty scarce, is the gold one. And by far the rarest one is the red one. I've never seen an original red one except with the sport or coupe top. And apparently the scouts that were produced in the first couple of years all came with the coupe top. And then they switched over to the, the longer travel top. I don't know if both tops are made at the same time. So those are the four colors, but uh, notice something about the difference in the grill decal. I'll, I'll comment on that in a little bit. Here's a rear view of the Ertl Scouts. Notice that spare tire held on by that screw in the middle. And this is a comparison of the two uh, wheel covers. There's the the more common uh, standard smooth wheel cover. And there's the, what I call the big truck wheel cover, which was for the late load star trucks and the fleet star trucks. I've seen a few of these smooth ones on, on the bigger trucks too. They must've stuck them on one day when they were out of something or, or somebody on the assembly line screwed up. Okay, let me comment on the grill decal. By the time the Earl Scouts by the mid 60s, the real scout had changed. They changed from the, what they call the basic scout to what uh, is referred to as the scout 800. The scout 800 now, by the time they got, see initially, I was telling you that the scouts had a four cylinder, 90 horsepower engine, which was half of their V8, their 304 v, truck V8 engine. Well. By this time, uh, they realized they needed more power. So the first iteration, they put a turbocharger on that little uh, engine and cranked the horsepower up to about 110. Well, that was sort of costly. So what they decided next iteration is they took a little larger V8. They, instead of starting with a 302 V8, they started with a, uh, I think it was the, the 345 or, or the, the 392 V8 and took half of that. So that produced an engine, still produced a half, an engine that uh, generated 111 horsepower. And also by this time, they had an optional uh, four speed transmission. So remember the old, the first one was three on the floor. Now their optional, optional transmission was four on the floor. And because the scouts are often fitted with blades in the front. Uh, the four-speed transmission gave you what was called a, a creeper gear. The first gear was quite slow. And so that would be really good for, for that kind of work. I think in real life, about 80% of the scouts were sold with four-wheel drive. So finding one with a two-wheel drive is, is, is rare as much it's much more scarce to find one with a two-wheel drive. Well, by the late 60s, they decided they needed even more power and they, they upgraded the uh, Scout to the 800A. And by this time, they added the V8 engine, the small 266 V8, so they had more power and also they also, they also added an automatic transmission. I think it was a Borg Warner transmission as an option. So that get, so with the wheel covers and the grill variations, you can have all, you can have all kinds of combinations, number of year. And there is no, I thought that maybe the early ones, the 800s would all have this 
early grill, but it turns out that I have this early grill in both versions and this later grill in both the spoke and the smooth wheel covers. So that that uh, assumption wasn't correct. So that's the common green one. Well, uh, Ertl kept those die cast scouts in production and around 19, late 81, I think in about 1970 or early 71, they, they discontinued the die cast scout production. So they didn't produce any, any uh, more uh, die cast scouts. But in 1975, they acquired Strupto, which made press steel trucks. Well, I must go back a bit. Apparently, Ertl had a big stock of unsold scouts. So that was enough to carry them two or three years uh, in in the toy market for the un, the un, the unsold uh, diecast scouts. Well, after they bought uh, Structo in '75, they changed their trucks over to Press Steel, as I was noting uh, back in the big truck production, and you had the Transstar two truck come out. Well, in '77, Ertl came out with this Press Steel scout. It was a little smaller scale, probably closer to one twentieth scale. And it had a full plastic interior. And these, uh, this roof panel was permanently affixed. That didn't come off. And the wheels were somewhat undersized on, on these toys. But they were in some ways sturdier. You couldn't lose the tops. Uh, the, the tin stood up or the steel press steel stood up for more abuse than the die cast did. And apparently they were cheaper to produce. This is another version. This is a fairly rare version of this Traveler Scout, uh, this black one. And here are a couple more. Here's another version. This is the Baja Scout, the silver one. And uh, this is the another version of the Baja Scout, the orange one. This is typical of the box that they came in. These were the Ertl boxes. And with these, they made some sets. I don't know if they sold this pickup truck separately as a, as a truck, but they, uh, they sold, came in the sets. And uh, most of those, uh, those uh, press steel scouts, we call these scout twos. By that time, they had changed the real scout to something they called a scout two. And, uh, these bring a little bit of money. Those other ones are basically $100 or $150 for one new in the box, except the rare black one. These sets, if you can find a complete one with all the horses and all of the other details, they'll, they sell for $250. I must mention by this time, this was a Scout II. Uh, and what Ertl had, or what International had done is remember that they dropped their line of pickup trucks in 1975. They couldn't compete with the big three because they didn't have the dealer network. So they dropped them. And so to make up for that, they enlarged the Scout to the Scout two. It had a longer wheelbase. And those two earlier ones that I showed you, this Scout Traveler replaced their very famous and long running travel all which is a competitor to the, to the Chevy Suburban. And uh, to replace their international pickups, they had these scout, these, uh, scout pickups. And when the fuel crunch came, well, by this time, the biggest engine available in the Scout II was a 345 V8. And one of the options on the 345 V8 was a four barrel carburetor and dual exhaust. So in terms of you wanting a muscle scout, that by far is the, is the most desirable one. But uh, also around nine, in the uh, later production of these in the 70s, they realized that the four cylinder engine would no longer cut it. So to get a six cylinder engine, they sourced one from American Motors. So this had the same six cylinder engine that your American Motors car had at the same time. And to really get into the economy market, 
they sourced a six cylinder diesel from Nissan. So one of the rare scouts, if you want, if you want a diesel scout to match your, your, your diesel pickup now, especially your loud Cummins and your, in your Dodges, buy this uh, Nissan six cylinder diesel. And people said, it sounds very much like that Cummins diesel. So these are the, these are the last scouts that International produced. And they, they probably were, they were produced until the early eighties. But remember that I said the die cast scout production ended around 1970 or 71. The reason it ended is that Ertl came out with the 1000 pickup, 116 scale pickup in for 1971. And they made this in several colors. But I wanted to give you some comparison. I guess I should have thrown that little uh, Ertl die cast scout. Here you've got the true scale scout. You've got the Ertl die, that's pressed steel. Uh, you've got the Ertl die cast scout. And there you've got the scout two, uh, the pressed steel one. And my take on it that the true scale scout was slightly oversized. Probably the Ertl was closer to size. And these uh, pressed steel scouts sourced from the, the Structo uh, stuff was more like uh, 120th scale. And notice that these have a full plastic grill on them. Uh, so that nowadays, uh, I, I did a I did a two a two month feature series on the scouts when I started writing for the uh, Toy Trucker magazine a couple of, of more than five years ago. I had lengthy feature articles two in a row because it took two, uh, two articles to cover these. And after I wrote about these scouts, a lot of people read them, read my articles and commented, and the prices of the scout toys escalated severely, went up by a factor of several. And that made it very difficult for me to try to buy some to complete some of the ones in our collection. That's why I'm still dragging at trying to, not only can I not find a better lime one, Probably if I found one, I couldn't afford it. So uh, I'm going to stop my share and I'm going to open it up to comments or questions. Great, Doug. Uh, wonderful presentation. So uh, yes, let's go to questions. Anybody uh, got some questions? Just press your space bar and uh, come on and ask them. Yeah, the, the, the true scale trailer, how hard are they to find by themselves? That one that was pulling that tractor on the trailer? Yes. That's fairly common trailer. Okay. Hey, the one that I that you see there that had the die cast rims, they were made by true scale for probably four or five years. And that's one of the designs that Ertl took over. And Ertl uh, offered the same thing, except they put... Uh, plastic wheels on red international colors with the off-white rims. And they were sold as part of the international toy line until at least the mid seventies. They're not I, common, they're not common, but they're not rare either. And I guess the other question I would have is how come the dealers got the yellow ones and not the red ones? Uh, I don't know. You'd, have to, <laughs> you'd probably have to, had to have to hit uh, Doug Vincent with that type of question. Likely it was an industrial guy that was making the decision in the marketing department. That's usually how stuff like that happens. Well, it was international. It was interesting, Bruce. The last licensed international truck that True Scale made was a yellow pickup. It was yellow on the cover of the international toy catalog in 1964, but it, when it came out, it was actually blue. But this one was yellow. This scout was still yellow in the International Toy Catalog. Yeah, let, let's also remember that at that point, uh, the farm equipment was only one third of the company or less. You had you know, the solar division and then you had the construction industrial division and the truck division. So while many of us collect uh, the farm toy replicas, 
uh, the truck and the industrial construction guys were also part of the marketing department and I'm sure they would have had some influence on what colors came out. Well, what, what really did, even though International was really ahead of the game in this market, and they had good pickups, though their pickups probably were a little more pricey than sturdier than the big three pickups, they just not did not have the dealer network. Uh, by that time, the sales of, to, of these trucks to non-farm people was getting to be quite significant. And if you didn't have dealers in the suburban areas to sell these trucks, you just didn't get the sale. In, in the area which I grew up in, in uh, Western Canada, in Alberta, south of Edmonton, our local dealer uh, carried a fairly full line of trucks. And so uh, there were many international pickups sold in our area, probably at least as many international pickups as there were Chevy trucks and more, there were more of those, there were more internationals than Fords or Dodges or Fargos. Well, most of the trucks, Dodges were Fargos in those days. So any other questions of uh, Doug? Uh, and a lot of good information there, Doug. Did you, uh, have you heard that uh, Volkswagen has bought the rights to the Scout name and that they're going to be, uh, um, I guess in a couple of years, they're going to be an electric pickup and uh, SUV with the Scout name again? That's correct. There, there also may be an internal combustion in the interim. Oh, okay. What they're discovering down here, the politicians, uh, the current uh, party in power in the U.S. And at the federal level wants to, if they had their way, they'd, they'd end production of inter internal combustion. Immediately. Yeah. But I think they've uh, overestimated the ability of the grid to charge these electric vehicles. And about a little over 1% of the new vehicle sales are uh, electric vehicles at this time. And uh, I think you get an idea. Now they're, they're facing reality. This new Ford F-150 electric pickup, I think it's called a Lightning. The recent tests of it show it's a very good truck, but it takes a lot of power to, to charge it. And they were pointing out that it's a good way to run your, when the power goes out in your neighborhood, you can run your whole house for a week from the battery of that Ford Lightning pickup. So you can imagine yeah. the amount of energy it takes to to put a full charge on that. And For especially sure. if you're trying to do that overnight, you've really got to jump. I mean, 240 won't even cut it because your commercial chargers are all running at 800 volts. All right. Okay, well, any other uh, comments? Last call for uh, questions for Doug. Well, we've got him here. Well, thanks very much, Doug. Uh, once again, you've uh, shared a lot of great information and uh, wonderful photographs as usual and, and a well-coordinated, organized presentation. Uh, on behalf of the collectors here tonight, I want to thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and expertise one more time. And uh, it's just great to uh, learn more about uh, some of these trucks, uh, some we've seen, some we haven't seen. And the odd one or two uh, we didn't even know about. So it's great information. So thank you so much once again. I, it was, this was easy because all of the pictures were from our collection except the pedal skull. Wow, that's impressive. Very good. Yeah.